As I watch the shuttle lift off the pad and soar into space, I am reminded again and again that nothing is impossible. To the person who really believes, all things are possible. That was the voice of educator philosopher Dr. D. Paul Riley, whose lectures and seminars have been inspiring people around the world for over 20 years. WMFE now welcomes Dr. Riley to its Orlando studios to present Broaden Your Horizons, a series of lectures for television. Welcome to this, the 12th program in this series, the second last one actually, which is designed to help you to broaden your horizons. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions in this. That was the opening of Dr. Riley's TV series, which has been seen by millions on PBS stations in the U.S. and on many other TV stations around the world. Dr. D. Paul Riley is a modern-day educator and philosopher with a highly distinctive and unique style which people can relate to. For over 20 years, he has traveled the world conducting management and motivational seminars for many of the world's leading organizations, including Cable & Wireless, Citibank, IBM, Lockheed, Prudential, and Shell. His daily radio series, Time to Think, is broadcast on radio stations around the world. He is the author of several books, including Success is Simple, The Science of Selling, Time to Think, and A New Business Philosophy. Dr. Riley comes highly recommended. Here's what some experts say about him and his teachings. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, author of The Power of Positive Thinking, said, Thank you for your cassette, Time to Think. It is excellent indeed. You have a perfect voice that comes through clear and distinct in addition to the high quality of the material. You are a good teacher as well as a writer. Dr. Robert Schuller, best-selling author, said, Thank you for sharing your book, Success is Simple, with us. God certainly has blessed you with special talents. Winston K. Pendleton, author of The Pursuit of Happiness, said, D. Paul Riley's step-by-step -step plan will guide you to the fulfillment of any goal you set for yourself. The sincerity of his conviction reaches out to you as you listen to him. Earl Nightingale, narrator of the Our Changing World radio series, said, Thank you for your cassette, Time to Think. Your shows are interesting and informative. Dr. David J. Schwartz, author of The Magic of Thinking Big, said, I've read your book twice already. You've done a good job. It should sell well. And Ward Avis, founder of Avis Rent-A-Car and author of The Art of Sharing, said, Success is simple if you follow the basic rules. I heartily recommend D. Paul Riley's teachings. Dr. Riley has now produced the Broaden Your Horizons complete in-house audiovisual training program. And here is a brief preview of some of the subject material that is covered in each of the 13 video presentations. In tape number one, Dr. Riley asks his students an important question and emphasizes that we're in control of our thinking, that everything is choice. He also discusses the role of luck relative to success. Could you be doing a better job this year than you did last year? Could you be a better mother, better father? better husband, better wife, better manager, whatever it is you do for a living? Could you be a better human being this year than you were last year? And I think if everybody in the audience here, you at home, me included, if we're being totally honest, we're going to answer that question in the affirmative, aren't we? We're going to say yes. And that's all I want you to do here is admit that you could be doing a better job. We, we need to realize that everything is, is choice. And if you choose to be a negative thinker, you're not going to be a winner in life. That's really what we're saying. You're not going to be very successful. If you choose to be a positive thinker, yes, you're going to be successful in all of your endeavors, in your personal life, your professional, per professional life, your social life, and your spiritual life. Luck has nothing whatsoever to do with it. it, it, it it's very sad. I was giving a talk one day, and somebody said, well, isn't luck, uh, there is such a thing as luck. I mean, you know, somebody won a car at a raffle the other day, isn't that luck? I said, yeah, is that the way you want to live your life? Hoping that your name might be pulled out of a hat? That's not the way I want to live my life. I want to set up in advance where I want to be. I want to go after it. Luck has nothing whatsoever to do with it. If there is such a thing as luck, I believe it's where opportunity meets preparation. In tape number two, Dr. Riley emphasizes the importance of the subconscious relative to decision-making. 
He also stresses the fact that we need to reprogram at the subconscious level to improve our attitude. I'm going to talk quite a lot through about the subconscious level of thinking because it's very powerful in all of our lives. We think we are making decisions on a conscious level, but we're not. You don't make any decision on a conscious level. You refer down to your subconscious, which is like a continuous loop cassette, and it's got a lot of negative programming in there. And you refer down to that, and based on what's happened in the past, then the decision is made on a conscious level. This is very powerful, this subconscious. It's extremely powerful. We need to reprogram ourselves because we need to have the right attitude. Poor attitude, poor results. Fair attitude, fair results. Good attitude, good results. Excellent attitude, and you're going to get excellent results. In tape number three, Dr. Riley discusses the fact that low self-esteem contributes to negative attitudes. He also discusses why many have low self-esteem and how to correct this problem. Now, here's the question, and it's an important one. Were we born with low self-esteem? We were not born with self, low self-esteem. That's quite definite. Okay, if we were not born with it, and we get to be 20, 30, 40 years of age, and we have got it, how did we get it? How did we get this low self-esteem? The answer is we got it through conditioning, through programming, through those people who have surrounded us, very often our parents. In tape number four, Dr. Riley discusses the brain, our computer, and how to program it for success. So my friends, why don't you use the gold mine that your creator gave you? Use it, remember it is a computer. Put in positive programming. Don't forget the computer is garbage in, garbage out. Let's not put garbage into our mind. Let's put in positive programming. I can do it. And believe you me, anything in this world really is possible. In tape number five, Dr. Riley discusses in depth the law of cause and effect, stressing the importance of accepting responsibility for our actions. The great Emerson referred to this law as the law of laws. That's how important he thought this law was, the law of cause and effect. Now, it's very simple to understand. It's, it's, it's not difficult at all. Anyone can really understand this law. Simply stated, it says that for every cause, there is an effect. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. To put it in simple language that all of us can understand, it means this. It means that my rewards in life will be in exact proportion to my service, to my contribution. I think a lot of us heard this many, many years ago in slightly different language as children. We heard somebody say, as you sow, so shall you reap. But you see, sometimes we forget that these phrases we heard many years ago have so much meaning to them. They are so relevant to our lives. This law means that what you put out is what you get back in return. Everything you do in life comes back to you. We have to accept responsibility for where we are in life. We have to cut out all the blaming. And that's what so many people do, don't they? If you meet someone who's not doing too well in life and you say, well, why do you think it is that you're not doing too well in life? Man, they will come up with a list so long, it's just not funny. Well, it was my parents' fault, you see. They didn't give me an education. Um, it's my spouse's fault, actually. That's the whole problem there. And the kids that we've got, and, and it's the government, and it's the times in which we live, and it's the economy, etc. My friends, it is none of those things. If there's something wrong in my life, there's only one place that I can go, and that is to a mirror. And I need to look at me and say, you have caused what has happened in your life right now, good or bad. We have to accept responsibility for ourselves. In tape number six, Dr. Riley talks about the importance of good health relative to success in life. Because as James Allen said in his wonderful book, As a Man Thinketh, he who lives in fear of disease is the person who gets it. See, we, we need to reprogram ourselves in a healthy way to see ourselves the way we want to be, fit and healthy, having a good life. It is very, very important that we don't put those thoughts in there that far too many people do. It's very, very powerful 
these thoughts that we put in here relative to our health. In tape number seven, Dr. Riley discusses problems and problem solving. What do most of us do when we're confronted with a problem? What is the sort of natural reaction to a problem? I think it is this. We either try to pretend we don't have one. We either try to sort of sweep it under the carpet, get rid of it. No, I don't have a problem. You tackle someone who has a, an alcohol problem, for example, an alcoholic, and try and tell them uh, you have a problem. No, I don't have a problem. I can take care of it. You know, I just have a few drinks every day, but I have it in control. Don't worry about it. People don't want to face up to problems. They try to sweep them under the carpet. They try to run away from them, try to run from their problems and, and go somewhere else so they can't see the problem and can't be confronted with it. We try to bury our head in the sand sometimes, don't we, when we have problems. So the first thing that all of us need to do when we have a problem is simply face up to it, admit Yes, I have a problem. Once you admit the problem, half the battle is really over. Then you need to write it down. When you have a problem, you need to write it down and fully define what the problem is. Look at your problems realistically. Don't allow little molehills to become enormous mountains. And that's what a lot of us do. We throw problems out of all proportion. We let them become much bigger than they really are. They say the biggest cause of ulcers is mountain climbing over mole hill. That's what a lot of us do. It's a little problem, but we blow it up out of all proportion. You need to relax. You need to cool it. You need to remain positive. You need to understand that that problem is a golden opportunity in disguise. Winston K. Pendleton wrote a wonderful book, which is called All Stop Worrying. And it's a tiny little book, but it's, it's, it's got some powerful messages in there. And he has a little formula in there that goes like this. Change your worry into concern, your concern into planning, and your planning into action. My friends, every problem that you've got is a golden opportunity in disguise. In tape number eight, Dr. Riley discusses the importance of communication skills and how to improve them. Now, the first thing I want to emphasize is this, that communication is a two-way street. And a lot of people, when they think of communication, this doesn't come to their mind. They seem to think, well, I'm a good communicator because I put my thoughts, because what is communication? Communication is really the expressing of feelings, ideas, thoughts, and emotions. That's really what it is, trying to transmit those ideas to other people, our feelings, our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions. They're in our head, but we get them to other people by communicating them to other people. But you see, communication is a two-way street. There's a transmitter and there's a receiver. And just because someone is transmitting, that doesn't mean to say that communication has taken place at all. I would look pretty stupid doing this series if I had no audience here and I was just talking to the wall. Uh, we need to have listeners as well. We need to have the receiver. And the link needs to be completed before communication actually takes place. And this, I believe, is why a lack of communication takes place so many times. Because, and if you want to prove what I'm saying, it's very simple. Well, perhaps when you go home this evening or when you go to your office or something with some other people, just sit down and talk to that person for 10 minutes. Transmit ideas, feelings, thoughts to that person. And then when you've finished, Ask the other person, tell me what I just said. <laughs> I think you will be amazed at how little of what you have actually said has been received. What is the result? A lack of communication. In tape number nine, Dr. Riley lists the qualities of leadership and also stresses the importance of planning. So what are some of the qualities that people need to have to be effective leaders. That's what I'd like to cover in this particular program for you here in the studio audience and you watching at home and perhaps a lot of the young people who would like to be leaders in the future. What are some of the things you should do to help you to be an effective, a good leader? I read a wonderful book many years ago and I'm sure some of you have read this book because it really is one of the greatest books. It's a literary classic as far as I'm concerned relative to how to be successful. Um, Napoleon Hill's uh, great book, Think and Grow Rich. I'm sure a lot of you have read that book. It's a wonderful book. 
But in that book, he has a chapter on leadership, and he gives 11 qualities of leadership. And I'd just like to give you these 11 qualities, and then we'll concentrate a little bit on each one of them. The 11 qualities of leadership, according to Dr. Napoleon Hill, are number one, unwavering courage, number two, self-control, number three, a keen sense of justice, number four, definiteness of plans, number five, definiteness of decision, number six, the habit of doing more than paid for, not just what you're paid for, the habit of doing more than paid for. Number seven is a pleasing personality. The eighth quality of leadership, according to Dr. Napoleon Hill, is sympathy and understanding. The ninth quality of leadership is mastery of detail. The tenth quality of leadership is willingness to assume full responsibility. And the twelfth quality of leadership, according to Dr. Napoleon Hill, is cooperation. And here's what Ivy Lee said to the president of the Bethlehem Steel Company. And this is a true story. It's relayed in many, many books. He said, take a blank sheet of paper, write on it the six most important things you have to do tomorrow, number them in their order of importance. When you're finished with item one, go on to item number two and write down the list. The interview is said to last about 15 minutes. And do you know how much Ivy Lee got from the president of the Bethlehem Steel Company for that idea? He sent him a check for $25,000. Now this is many, many years ago when $25,000 was worth an awful lot more than it is today. And it said that that simple idea helped that small company, which it was at the time, become an industrial giant. So it's a simple idea, but it's a way of getting yourself organized. What do I have to do tomorrow? Write it down. Number the, the items in their order of importance, setting up priorities. Start to work on item one when it's finished, on item number two, and down through the list. It's a simple idea, but it gets you organized. In tape number 10, Dr. Riley stresses the importance of continuing education and the need to stop procrastinating. He also discusses how to make more money. It was Bacon who said, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So do you want to have power in your life? We hear that word is used a lot today, isn't it? Empowerment. Do you want to have power in your life? Well, you need to get some more knowledge. You need to get some more education. And don't give me those excuses that so many people give. Well, I'm past it, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my 50s, 60s. So what? So what? The knowledge is there. We should never stop growing, stop learning. Education is very, very important. One of the greatest quotes I ever heard was by a gentleman called E.A. Feline. And he says this. He said, education does not mean teaching people to know what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. Let me just repeat that again, because it's pretty deep. Education does not mean teaching people to know what they do not know. It means teaching them to behave as they do not behave. If you've been putting things off like the majority of people do, please, I implore you in the studio audience and you at home to cut that nonsense out and say if something is worth doing, it's worth doing today. Because if you keep on putting things off all your life, you will never amount to anything and you will never achieve the great things that your Creator puts you on this earth to achieve. Do it now. And when you take charge of your life and you stop procrastinating and you get that education that you need, you get those qualifications, then you're going to make more money. Oh, I see some smiles coming on people's faces now. Yes, money. What is money? Here's a question that maybe you haven't been asked before, and you probably say to me, well, isn't he, what's he asking that stupid question for? What is money? We all know what money is. It's the little green stuff you have in your pocket. The best definition I ever heard of what money is, again, comes from Earl Nightingale. I am so grateful that I was associated with Earl Nightingale for many, many years. I learned so much from this great man. And he said, money is the reward for our service. In tape number 11, Dr. Riley stresses the importance of goals and goal setting. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. 
So in other words, if that's the definition of success, obviously, to be successful, you've got to have a goal. And you see, this is why 95% of the people in the world fail, because they've never sat down and established a goal. They're just going along from day to day, almost like robots, hoping something good is going to happen to them, hoping it's just suddenly, everything's going to suddenly work out one day and everything's going to be right. That is not, my friend, the way life works. The way life works is, first of all, you determine where you want to be. You set your goals. You have an aiming point. You have something to focus on. You have a purpose in your life. You know where you are going. And then when you have those goals set up for yourself, life takes on a brand new meaning because life becomes exciting then once you set those goals up for yourself. But once you set up those long-range goals, then you set up your yearly goals, then you set up those monthly projects, weekly programs, and daily things to do. And then once you've got that all in place, it's very simple. It really is very, very simple. What I do today is going to help me to achieve the program that I set for myself for this particular week. Once I have achieved the program for this week, that is helping me to achieve the project that I've set up for this particular month. The project achieved for this month is helping me to achieve my goal that I've set up for this year. And the goals that I've set up for this year, once they have been achieved, they're going to take me to the year 2000, where I've set up those long-range goals. In tape number 12, Dr. Riley discusses the importance of being consistent and persistent. He also talks about the need for self-discipline and honesty. And he defines real security. The person who really becomes a winner, who becomes outstandingly successful, is someone who really stays with it, who is persistent in the pursuit of their goals. And I know that's a tough thing to do sometimes. What it takes is self-discipline, really. It takes self-discipline, and that's a tough one, self-discipline. Self-discipline starts where goal-setting leaves off, really. You set your goals, that's fine, but you need this self-discipline to keep yourself on course, to keep doing the right things. And it's not easy. That's a tough one. I know it's been difficult for me in my life, but I know it's what's helped me to succeed, is by self-disciplining myself. Now, let me ask you another question here. And again, you can answer it to yourself quietly, and also you at home can answer it. What is security? I think when a lot of people are asked that question, I think the average person would say, well, security to me is uh, having a nice home. Uh, perhaps security is having money in the bank. Uh, security is having stocks and bonds, uh, maybe a good health plan. What? 101 different ideas would come up. Well, I'd like to say to you, that the only kind of security that anyone can have is what's within oneself. The only kind of security is what's within you. Your personal ability, your belief in yourself. That's real security. Because we can lose money. People do it all the time. You can make a fortune, lose it, and start out and build another one. But you're only going to do that if you're really secure within. That's security. I feel good about myself. I know that I have talent. I know that I have ability. And even though I'm a little bit down now, I'm on my way out again. I'm heading up there again. That's really the only kind of security that there is. My fellow countryman, George Bernard Shaw, put it like this. He said, we have to make the world honest before we can honestly say to our children that honesty is the best policy. In tape number 13, Dr. Riley discusses the spiritual aspect of life, putting the golden rule into practice, and the importance of balanced living. When I talk about being spiritual, I'm not talking religious. I don't like to talk religion because that's a very personal thing for every individual. Everybody thinks a little bit differently, and everybody's concept of the Creator is a little bit different. And it's not for me or anybody else, I believe, to, to tell you what that is. That's up to you to decide. But I'm talking in a much broader sense here realizing that there's something more to this world than just this world here. There is a power in the universe, a creative force, a higher power, we like to call it, which is there for all of us to draw upon. And to me, I, from my own personal experience, when one gets that part of your life in order, to me, everything else just seems to fall in place. Being spiritual to me is, I guess, 
putting the golden rule into practice. This is a simple little thing, and a lot of us talk about it. We say it over and over again, do unto others as you'd have them do to you. But I wonder, as I observe people, if we're really doing this. And I think a lot of us, we're talking once again about these things, but we're not doing them. If everybody in this world was doing that, putting that golden rule into practice, we'd have a perfect world here. I believe our lives should be well balanced. Some of us are putting a lot of effort into some parts of our life and the rest of our life is, is hurting. Your personal life, your professional life, your financial life, your spiritual life, your social life. I think you need to put effort into all of these different areas of your life because each one affects the other. You know, they used to say many years ago, leave your problems at home, don't bring them to work with you. What a crazy thing to say to somebody. I mean, if you have a row with your spouse this morning, it comes to work with you, doesn't it? And you're going to be, come to work in an agitated state of mind. It's going to affect your production on the job. If you have a great week at work, that goes home to your family. You go home in a happy, motivated state. If you go out on Sunday and you play a good game of, of golf or tennis or baseball, whatever, and you win or your team win, that goes home to your family. It comes to work with you as well. So you see, every aspect of your life is affecting the other. So I believe that it, it, it beholds all of us to make sure that we're not just putting a whole load of effort into one part of our life and the rest is suffering because they all rub off on each other. They all affect each other. They're all interconnected, all of the different parts of our life. I think all of us need to give some thought to this, don't we? Uh, am I really, um, is it just my career and my family is hurting? or do I have no social life, or am I not thinking about the spiritual part of my life? We need to put effort into all of those areas of our life so that we will have a well-balanced life. That's, that will be the best kind of life that all of us can have, is to have a well-balanced life.